Welcome back. Well, after a year of climate catastrophes impacting communities from Florida to Pakistan to Puerto Rico, the pressure to reduce carbon emissions is mounting. Next month, world leaders will gather in Egypt for the UN Climate Summit, where the COP27 climate finance is expected to be high on the agenda. The next United Nations Convention on Climate Change, or COP, will take place from the 6th to the 18th of November this year in 2022 at Sharm El Sheikh in Egypt. United Nations new climate chief Simon Steele said, every COP should move us closer to the target of halving emissions by 2030. It is now his job to make sure the world cuts emissions of heat-trapping gases by about half because these gases are the ones fueling the increasingly frequent weather disasters that is affecting the world. Every COP is a make or break COP. Every COP counts and every COP should move us one step closer or multiple steps closer to that target of halving emissions by 2030. Dr. Tara Shine, an environmental scientist and the CEO of Change by Degrees, a climate consultancy, emphasized the urgency to make progress at the upcoming COP in Egypt. Dr. Shine mentioned the severe impacts of climate change in the Horns of Africa and the famine in the area. And according to the UN's desertification agency, East Africa is the world's hardest hit drought region. I think this year, given the impacts of climate change that have been experienced around the world, it's also an African COP. We see the impacts of climate change on the Horn of Africa and the famine there. I think there's going to be a real urgency at this COP, and that's what I expect our leaders to, to bring to the table. More developed countries like the United States have emitted far more than their share of heat-trapping carbon dioxide from the burning of coal, oil and natural gas. But nations like Pakistan and Puerto Rico have been hurt far more than their share of global carbon emissions. Pakistan has experienced both extreme heat and flooding this year. We really have to take this emergency seriously and act like it's an emergency. We now have real recent lived experience of what it is when the world and all of our leaders work together to solve a crisis from the COVID pandemic. In 2015, at the Paris COP agreement, the world agreed to a stricter temperature goal of limiting warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius since pre-industrial times. Steele said the aim is to dramatically cut pollution to keep the temperature below the 1.5 degree goal by 2030, which requires nations to increase their targets for cutting emissions every five years. But he fears that it's less likely, as it is only a few tenths of a degree away and is approaching fast. Look at this summer that, that we've just had, and this again goes beyond just vulnerable countries. Um, the extreme heat, the fires, the floods, the droughts, and um, whether that's in Europe, whether that's in, in North America, China. Um, the, the, the consequences, the realities of climate change and um, its impacts are being felt. The world already warmed 1.1 degrees Celsius, or 2 degrees Fahrenheit, since pre-industrial times. It is clear that the effects of climate change are already being felt around the world, and time is running out to save the climate from the point of no return.